Hello, my name is Lin. I'll be going over how to use Set Driven Key in Maya 2011. Uh, what I'll be doing today might not work in the older versions of Maya because in the previous ver the older versions of Maya, uh, you were not able to actually change the graph editor for your Set Driven Keys. I'm not quite sure which version they started adding. I think it had been either 2008 or 2009, but um, uh, I know the ones with the single digits they did not have this. So. What is set driven key? I'm going to create a sphere or a cube here. I'm going to use a sphere. Set driven key is the ability to uh, add pre baked animation or pre created animation inside an attribute on the side. Uh, I'll show you an example. I'm first going to create an animation, and then later I'm going to create that animation inside one of these attributes. This way you can see how they're perfectly linked. So I'm going to make a bouncing ball. This is always a great start with. So let's have this ball on top of the grid. I'm going to hold the letter D and the letter V down. Then we're going to move my pivot and snap it to the bottom of this sphere. I'm going to hold the letter X and move that up. Just snap it exactly on the top of the grid. Freeze my transforms and delete my history. Uh, so I want to start with a simple bouncing ball animation going uh, up and down. Uh, I'll have it to be a 20 frame animation from frame 0. So there we go. Um, at a starting position, I need this ball to be flattened. So I'll be taking uh, scale Y and taking this down. I'll make it a 0.5. I like things to be uh, all nice, perfect numbers. And if it were to go down 0.5, it would have to spread at a 1.5. That way we have the, uh, the right amount of volume being displaced as it flattens. I'll select all of these, key selected, and for Y, I'm going to key this too. That way, on the starting position, it's on the ground. I also want it to end in the exact same location. So hold the control to click the rest of these. Right click, key selected. So at frame 10, I need this ball to go up in the air. Um, I'll move this up. I'll just use um, uh, 7. That works pretty nicely. And now I'm going to make the sphere go back to normal like so. With all of these channels selected, key selected. So right now our uh, animation goes from flat, normal, flat. This ball also needs to stretch when it goes up. Uh, to play safe I always let go in the middle and I can always shift the keys back and forth. So that would be 5 over here. I'm going to use the reverse value this time. So it's going to be a 0 0.5, 1.5, 0.5. So have it stretch as much as and flattened. Key selected. Being that I'm not changing anything on Y, I'll keep it the same. So it goes stretched, normal. So I'm going to stretch again at frame 15. So 0 0.5, 1 0.5, 0 0.5. Key selected. Now if I play back this animation, make sure I'm going to play this back at real time. It looks kind of odd because technically speaking, uh, that stretch should probably happen uh, before it hits. So if it's exactly in the middle, it seems like it takes a little too long for it to happen. So you can shift the frames back and forth if you want to. For now this actually looks kind of decent, not too bad. I want to shift it back a little bit. So I'm going to Window, Animation Editor, Graph Editor. I can look right in here. Um, I see all my keys inside. So I'll do it with my uh, scale XYZ because I want to shift this back a little bit. So that's this selected. Press W, use your middle mouse button, and I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to shift this back one, two frames. I'm going to do the same thing, one, two frames. That way, it's happening at frame three. I like that effect more. And there we go, that's a little bouncing ball. Now, what I want to do is store that into an animation. Oh, there was one more thing I need to change my uh, editor. Notice it's easing in and easing out. So on Y, it's easing in and easing out, which probably doesn't make any sense for a uh, bouncing ball. So I'm going to hold, uh, I'm going to click this, press W and move this up. And removing the ease in and ease out, grab just that little handle, change that, okay. Now, looks a little bit better. I'm not exactly an animator, so I think this is good enough to uh, prove my point. 
So from here, I'm going to try to store something similar to this inside an attribute instead. This way, if I had a character that's a bouncing ball that just goes up and down, this would be equivalent to his walk cycle. So all I'll have to do is move him around while animating that going back and forth. Um, based on the animation we have here, I'm going to make the exact same effect. But the difference is, it's not going to be bounded by a timeline, but bounded by an attribute in here. So knowing that, start a new scene. Here's my sphere again. I'm going to do the same thing, put it on top of my grid. Press D and V, snap that right there, rotate, hold X, move that up. Freeze my transforms, I'll just rename this to ball, delete my history, and let's create our first attribute. To create an attribute, go under modify, add attribute, make sure your object is selected. I'll call this ball bounce. I actually don't have to have this on top of the actual uh, sphere. I can have this on a uh, ring if I wanted to. So that way, uh, all my keys are set to that instead. It's entirely up to you. I can put this on my sphere. Um, actually, this time let's do create a controller. I'll go to curves. Let's create a controller for our little sphere. I'll call this ball control. And I'm going to parent my little sphere to uh, my curve. That when I move my curve around, I just move the sphere around. Not bad. And I'm going to select my curve this time, modify, add attribute. I call this ball bounce. I'm going to create a float value, and when I was animating, I had animated from frame 0 to frame 20 with a default of 0. If I leave all these blank, this will mean it will go from negative infinity to positive infinity. My default value is the value that I start with. For example, translate x, y, and z and rotate x, y, z is default to 0. But for scale, the default is set to 1. In this case, I'm doing 0. Float, the type of data type of this, is basically a number with a decimal point afterwards. Integer is like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with no decimal points. String is basically characters, so meaning uh, letters. Um, vector. You can see XYZ here and XYZ, those are all vectors. You also have um, Boolean, which is true or false, on or off. Enum, enumeration, is basically a set of words that you can set to it. So um, if you ever dealt with the human IK system, you'll see pin all, pin rotate, all those words in there are enums. So for this case, I just want to do it with a float value that just goes smoothly from 0 to 20. I'll click add. We have that now added into our little uh, control. Right now it does absolutely nothing if I drag down, it can't go any lower than zero, and I drag all the way up, it'll go to 20 and it'll max out. If I try to type 50, it'll still go back to 20. Um, what I want to do now is go to Animate, Set Driven Key, Set. Again, that's under the Animate menu, Set Driven Key, Set. we will see uh, a term called driver and driven. And driver is the object or the attribute controlling. It doesn't have to be a separate object, it can be the exact same object. Um, the difference is uh, it's the attribute that you need to know. So this is going to be the driver, load driver. My ball itself would be the driven because I'm controlling the attributes inside the ball with this curve. 